Now, extracellular. Um, one very important molecule in the extracellular space is the, is the collagen. Um, I'm working uh, in the field of rheumatology, and we have a whole class of diseases which are called the collag collagenosis, collagen diseases. Uh, it is taken as a, as a synonym for the diseases of the uh, um, um, mixed con uh, the connective tissue, uh, the connective tissue, the, the tissue between uh, uh, the, the cells, you can say. And, and that is filled by many uh, proteins, but the collagen is, is a highly important one. And it will go along any uh, blood vessel, any artery, any vein, there will be collagen around. And in the, in the interconnective tissue also collagen will always be there. Now the collagen molecule, molecule is also a, a, a helix, but it is a triple helix. And there is seen from above also a space in the middle which is free and where the water can enter. So that is another example. Yes, that's not available here. I'm sorry for that. We have to. It looks like that. It seems to be quite narrow. I was also doubting whether that is very valid. But let, let us take the next uh, slide. And that gives a, a, a different additional view that eventually the space in the tube is too narrow, but what it definitely does is organizing the water around that uh, triple helix strand. And this picture shows nicely that it remains organized in, in case A as long as the, as the tissue is in a native state. But if you heat it or cook it, then the, the collagen will denaturalize, it will break up, and the whole uh, array of ordered, of ordered water, of organized water, is gone. It can no longer remain in, 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 in that pattern. You see, this is uh, after heating the protein, after heating the collagen, then the strands are no longer in a triple helix, and the water is just in a random um, uh, uh, setting. So also in the connective tissue we find org organized water or, or ordered water. Please. Now just one example from, from, from glands. I, I took the example of an of a adrenal gland. So there is a cortex and a medulla and in the medulla we have a lot, lots of uh, uh, blood vessels and uh, nerves going there. So both are sites of ordered water. Whereas around we have uh, uh, lots of cells producing the uh, various hormones and there would be, we would assume an interaction between the ordered water in the central portion and the electrical activity of these cells in the peripheral area. Um, the next one shows an example from the hypophysis same scenario, we have cells and there's a stem and from that stem, from that stem, uh, blood vessels and nerves enter that organ. So the ordered water would be more in the central portion and the electrical activity would be more around. But it, that pattern becomes very apparent if we look to the brain. That would be the next, yeah, that's just to be done quickly. Yes, quickly. And the next one would be the brain. Yeah. Now, um, next one shows a slice through one lobe of brain, one lobe of brain only. Now, these are the highly electrically active cells. And in the middle, you have the stem or the white matter. And that white matter con contains all the axons of the cells in, in, in this layer. So there is a, a tremendous amount of electrically active cells here. They are sending their dendrites to the neighboring cells, or even far, more far than the neighboring ones. And they are sending each one axon, and that axon will go here in this direction. So in that area, from here to here, 
they are completely parallel. And it must be millions and millions and millions of them in each load. Millions is not enough. Is, is that the white matter, that the parallel stuff, or is it the bits we're Sorry? So the white, is the white matter the parallel stuff that you're talking about? Yes, okay. yes. The white matter, there is a gray matter. This is the, the place where the electrically active cells are. And then they are sending their axons into that stem. And, and in that portion, all these axons are completely parallel. And it means nothing, but there is, a, is an area in the size of, of, of more than a centimeter, centimeter where the water must be completely ordered, basically, if there is no symmetry breaking. Now, um, the next one shows, yeah, you, you, you have here around, you have electrically active cells. And in the middle, next one, here, in the middle you have here, you have the axons, each axon containing lots of microtubuli. Each microtubulus containing um, ordered water. And all of them lying parallel, parallel, so it is an area in the, in the size of a few centimeters which contains highly ordered water. And we assume that there will be an interaction between the symmetry breaking in that and the electrical activity around. That is the basic idea. Yes, now all these things have already been told. This next one. Yes, electrical activity of the cerebral cortex will interact with the um, water molecules, the ordered water in the white matter of the brain. That's the main uh, idea. One more. No. Yeah, uh, only recently we got very beautiful pictures from um, IBM, it was IBM sponsored, something like that. They, they have a, a, um, a project to make a, a three-dimensional map of, of the brain in this resolution. And they want to, that is the project, they want to model it in, in, in several supercomputers, how they are interconnected. So we got a really beautiful uh, pictures now um, showing that uh, the cells in the cortex are also in a geometrical position. They are not randomly distributed, rather they form a pattern. One cell, this would go in the third dimension, one cell, next cell, next cell, in a defined distance, again, one, two, three, and it goes on like that, one, two, three, and it goes on like that. So the cells themselves uh, form something like a, like a pattern. And they are sending their axons, and those axons also form a pattern. It's amazing, unbelievable. And yeah, another one, maybe not enough light, but what you can see, next one, is that the cell bodies are not randomly distributed, rather they are in, in positions in space, defined positions. Okay, next one. So I didn't find much, many authors who worked on that topic, uh, but, uh, but one from whom I, I got good uh, inspiration and, and is uh, Georgiev. He wrote that the photons emitted by the ordered water that forms coherent domains in its interaction with the local electromagnetic field. So that is the, the key uh, idea which we, we have here. There are local domains of, of ordered water they got some symmetry break, breaking. Whenever that happens, photons are emitted. And they would interact with the well-known electromagnetic activity around. So that gives a substantial improvement of the model which we, have, which we had up, up to there. Now, now, the first objection to that model would be, uh, we also had that objection, that these effects would be so small, how they can influence the electromagnetic activity. The acti activity is, um, well, it is not very strong, but it is strong enough uh, to be measured. And uh, how, how the uh, symmetry breaking and that emission of a, of a quasi-particle, we would say now, how that weak force can, can influence the electromagnetism of, of the cortex. Now, we, we would say that normally it would not happen, but if this symmetry breaking would be synchronized. It would be augmented. 
and that augmentation that that would help to get it affected. Okay, the, the principle of coherence is clear, I think. Coherence means that it, it, it gets uh, the same or almost the same or going to have the same frequency and the same phase. Now, that is an ideal position. It is, it is realized in the laser. But when we are in life, it, it will not be 100% in phase, 100% same frequency, but it will go somehow in that direction. And if it is incoherent, like, like in this case, uh, there will be lots of frequencies and they will be out of phase. This is the case what we are getting from, from now. No, that light does not have all the frequency, but, but light from the sun will have all, all the visible frequencies. Okay, th this is uh, the range of possibilities. And next one will show how we, oh yes, before we go to our, um, how, we, how we use that model in, in our framework, I just want to say that Stuart Hammerhoff was, was using a very similar um, approach. Um, and, and he has published lots of, of work how the quantum coherence um, would influence the state of mind. So if the quantum coherence is high, it will be another state of mind. And if it breaks down, and for example, in, in, in anesthesia, there is no consciousness. He has given a guess. And that gas will paralyze something, and uh, the person cannot be conscious due to that. So that is a, a state where um, there's almost no quantum coherence, at least no sufficient uh, quantum coherence in the, in the brain. And uh, when he goes to a normal, normal state of being awake, there would be a certain amount of quantum co coherence, and then it would break. Again, it would be built up, and the quantum coherence would break. What's the time scale there, again, down the bottom? It's in seconds, but where are the seconds? Can't read them. Um, seconds are here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's it looks like that. Seconds, hmm? Is it microseconds? Seconds, milliseconds? It says, it says just seconds. Yes, yes. This I don't know. This one, no? No, so it's ours, so it's ours. It's wrong. Because even the top one's roughly 17 hertz, isn't it? That's, is that right? It's an ECG of some sort. Who is this? This one? Yeah. My question is, what is this left hand that is called? Quantum incoherence. I mean, what does that mean? What is this image of the heart? No, no, he didn't measure it. It is a model. It is a model. And he oh. puts the quantum coherence also at the nanotubes. And if. Yes. It's not data. It's not data. It looks like it, but it is. No, no, no. It is a model. It is a model. It is not measured. But uh, the concept is he, he, he has done lots of uh, publications on that. And, and he, he explains, or tries to explain, that the quantum coherence at the microtubuli is building up and breaking down. And it depends how it, that happens. And that would determine the state of mind. And he would distinguish with this model a normal experience, a case of anesthesia. This is the simplest case. And then there would be a case of dreaming and in between heightened experience, altered state. So um, the difference here is, in the heightened experience, you come to a higher state of quantum coherence, but it breaks down again to the normal uh, level. Whereas here, um, it comes to a higher, when it breaks down, it is still higher than, uh, than normal. But the, but the thing is, 